Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. In this video, we're going to cover setting up a uh, RTX toggle switch that uh, takes everything in your scene that's uh, casting rays or setting rays or whatever and turns them on or turns them off. Um, so the prerequisite is here that you already have uh, ray tracing enabled in your project. I'm not going to cover that because that's something that you can set while you're creating a new project um, and it's no longer as difficult as it used to be. I believe you can also uh, toggle on and off from the project settings uh, but that you know also causes you, you know forces you to restart your engine and all that kind of stuff. This is just something that runs uh, in the level and is uh, easily accessible. Uh, just be able to switch stuff on and off while you're working uh, if you are someone like me and isn't running an RTX enabled graphics card. Uh, I'm still running a 1080 Ti, which while it allows real-time ray tracing in apps like Unreal Engine, you really shouldn't be gaming with it and you really shouldn't be working with it on if you want, you know, some performance back. So I've known a few people are kind of struggling with uh, having ray tracing on in, you know, the engine while they're working. So... Uh, but are still wanting to use it. So this is a, a way I came up with uh, for something I'm working on to kind of get around that problem. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, get going. So uh, first thing I want to do is just open up the blueprint I already built, uh, just to kind of give you a uh, rundown on what's going on and kind of show you where we're going. Uh, so uh, in the construction script, uh, we're basically just uh, you know, setting a bool um, value that, uh, you know, because it's a bool, it is either true or false and basically just uh, manually sets a bunch of, um, you know, checkboxes and conditions or whatever um, that uh, uh, will take anything that we've set uh, for it to take uh, to be able to turn thing, you know, ray tracing on or off. So it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. It looks like a lot of nodes, but there's a lot of copying and pasting going on. So let's just go ahead and delete this uh, blueprint from our level. Let's go ahead and save. And we're going to go ahead and start by creating a new blueprint. And we want to create an actor blueprint. And we're just going to call this RTX uh, toggle tut because. All right, we're just going to go ahead and open that up. Um, and then we're going to dock that to our uh, main window. And let's just go ahead and while we're at it is and drag this blueprint into our level. It's currently an empty blueprint. It's not doing anything. It's essentially null. Uh, but that's about to change. So if you are at all unfamiliar with blueprints uh, or you haven't spent much time with them, you don't really know, you know the difference between a construction script and an event graph. Uh, the event graph is the event-driven uh, code execution that happens during gameplay. Uh, and I, there might be a couple cases where you can do stuff that's outside of gameplay. Um, uh, but for the most part, uh, anything that's just going to uh, execute uh, while you are just in the editor, you want to do in the construction script. So um, that is where we're going to be spending our time here. And from our construction script uh, input pin, we are going to, or execution pin, uh, we are going to type uh, branch so that we get our um, basically our boolean condition um, from our the uh, boolean condition pin we're going to drag that out let go and we're going to promote that to a variable we created the variable down here in our variables list we're just going to call that rtx underscore on and because it's asking question my brain requires that there is a question mark there what you call it is irrelevant really it's just something that you know is uh, you know uh, it's relevant to you know what the you know what you're trying to do is um, just so that you know what's going on or anyone using the tool knows what's going on. Um, uh, now we're just going to add a post. We're going to add two post process volumes to our blueprint. We're going to call one RTX underscore on, and we're just going to duplicate that and call that RTX underscore off. Um, right now, they are, for all intents and purposes, they're both active and on, uh, and they both have the exact same settings. Um, and so what we want to do before we kind of go any further is that we're going to want to um, differentiate them. 
And so in this particular case, we're more worried about ray tracing stuff than anything else. So we're gonna type uh, ray into the search details. Um, we're going to make sure ambient inclusion is turned off. Um, well, I'm sorry, actually, no, because this is RTX on, we want that on. <laughs> Uh, we're going to set global illumination to brute force and set the max bounces to three. And uh, reflections should be on, ray tracing, although they will be on whether that's on or off, but we're just making sure that it's set to on. Um, and for reflections, we're going to want area shadows. And same thing with... Um, Ray tracing, transparency, area shadows, and translucency, although we're not rendering anything translucent here. Uh, basically, this is just so that, um, and let's just do max roughness, set it to one, uh, so that we're ray tracing everything all the time. Um, and for our RTX off, basically we're doing the same thing, uh, but in reverse, so enable ambient occlusion, turn that off. Uh, ray trace global illumination is disabled. Um, reflections, we want to make sure it's set to screen space. Um, shadows, hard shadows are fine on that stuff since we're not we're not doing all that stuff because this stuff's effectively off once uh, screen space reflections is set to screen space. Or I should say reflections are set to <laughs> screen space. Um, okay, so now uh, we're going to grab our RTX on reference and from here we're just going to type enable. So we're gonna set enable, and from our true output on our branch, uh, we're gonna set that to enabled, and we're just going to uh, tuck that reference under there, and uh, make a copy of that, set that to off, and grab our RTX off reference, and plug that into that. So what's going on here is that when RTX is set to on, uh, it'll execute true. It will enable the post-process volume for the RTX on and disable the post-process volume for RTX off. Save, compile, and then we're going to select all these, copy, paste. Uh, if you didn't know in um, Unreal Engine, if you click before you paste, it will paste where you clicked. Um, very handy, um, very user-friendly. Um, and all that. So now, uh, all we have to do is invert the selection on there, save compile, so that when it, this reads false, RTX on is disabled and RTX off is enabled. All right, and so we can test that out. Um, but before we can do that, actually, we have to set our uh, variable here to um, be uh, public. So it's editable uh, from the engine side of things. So if we go back here, now that that's set to public, we now have our checkbox that says RTX on and off. And as you can see, just by toggling that, you can already see it change. Um, however, we have some lights here that maybe we want to have, you know, ray trace shadows turned on and all that, uh, which... Um, why wouldn't you, right? So um, let's just, you know, so we get make sure we're getting as much performance as we can. We'll set that off for now. And then, um, so we know that we have one directional light. We have one skylight. And back here, we have one point light. Now, the easiest way uh, to set this up is uh, because we're using an actor blueprint, we're not using the level blueprint, uh, we can't reference those actors directly. We have to basically run a search for them and find them. And there's different ways of setting this up. The easiest way, for the sake of this tutorial, is to get all actors of class. Now, if you have a big project, you really don't want to use get all actors of class. I want to stress that. You, know, you want to set something up like... Um, uh, gameplay tags or something like that, which is a little bit more efficient and... Uh, you know, you can kind of pre-group things into lists and that stuff that way. But um, in this particular case, we're just going to get all actors of class because, you know, it's something we're running in the engine and we're not running it on tick. So it's just something you click, it makes the change. So in this case, get all actors of class is fine. 
And we want to get all actors of class. And so, uh, again, if you're unfamiliar with Unreal Engine or Blueprints, uh, classes are anything uh, of a, a particular type. So in this particular case, we're going to get the directional light class. And so what get all actors of class will do is basically search your uh, level for uh, any actors of the same type. In this case, it will grab all the directional lights it can find. Right now, we're only using one, but um, you know there are cases where maybe you want more than one. Not necessarily in the game, but you know for cinematics and stuff like that that are being rendered to file, which is mostly what I do. That's fine. Um, so from here, uh, it uh, outputs a uh, an array. So in Unreal Engine, anything with this type of icon, and there's also another one of the same type of icon where that center. Uh, pieces filled with another little square of the same color, um, like that, uh, that just means an array. An array is just a collection of uh, objects of the same type. And so whatever you're getting, putting into an array, they, you know, basically it's just a list. And so what we want is for each loop. And essentially what that will do is it will take all the items in your array and create an exec, you know, uh, a, an execution for each item. So uh, from an array element, we're going to, uh, I believe it's ray trace shadow like component. And we connect the loop body to that so that um, this will execute multiple times until it's gone through all the uh, elements in the array. In this case, because we only have one direction light, it's gonna execute once. Uh, but if you have multiple lights of the same type, uh, it will execute one for each one it finds. So basically, it will every time it will loop, it will uh, go to the next element that it, that's in the list, next element in the list, and run this execution. So uh, you don't have to. Uh, the for each loop basically means that you only have to code it once, but it will execute it for every item that it finds of the same type. Hope that makes sense. Okay, so. Um, now that we have that, we're going to set the inverse value for the other, uh, for the false pins. And we'll just uncheck that so that uh, when it's set to false, it will turn ray trace shadows off. And so we can, if we select our blueprint, ray trace shadows on, you can see that the shadow changed because uh, I set this uh, light up to be very soft shadow. So it's, uh, if I go into the properties for that, um, you can see that the soft angle and source angle uh, I set up to five, um, so that the light shadow, the shadows from those lights are very, very soft. Uh, really, just so you can see the difference. Um, and so uh, we're going to want to do the same thing for our skylight and uh, for that point light. Point light's not going to be too drastic because Unreal Engine's already pretty good at uh, doing soft shadows on those types of lights, but. Uh, we're going to go ahead and set that up anyway. So we're going to start by copying and pasting this, but what's going to happen uh, when we connect this? Um, a, or there's a few different ways we could connect this, but we could do that uh, or do what I like to do really, and I probably should have set this up first, is set up a sequence uh, like I have in my original blueprint. Um, and what the sequence does is uh, really just a order of, operations execution so it basically goes we're going to do this and then we're going to do this and then we're going to do this uh in this particular scenario it's not needed um really uh sequences are best used uh when you're like writing to a variable and then reading from that variable uh in the same tick and so um a good case is right now um i have a little cinematic test that I'm setting up using a Viper from Battlestar Galactica where I have all the little thrusters firing uh, via code. Um, and so uh, I need to, you know, get like uh, the ship's position and rotation and all that kind of stuff and then feed that information into variables and do some math to figure out what's changed. And so um, I'm able to do that with sequences as opposed to having to wait for like the next tick or something like that. Um, So we're going to connect this, and when I hit compile, 
uh, it's going to break. It's going to I'm going to get an error, and it's going to be on these two nodes. Uh, and really, the problem. Oh, it's going to do that once I set it to skylight. It's going to going to error out, and um, yeah. You know, if you don't know what's going on, you're going to be like, "Oh my God, why isn't it working?" Uh, you just have to delete these two components and recreate them, and it's pretty simple. Uh, basically what's happening is that uh, Unreal Engine is once you've plugged something into the array of a for each loop It's basically become just for those particular types of items and go from the array element to the target and it'll automatically create the light component for us. so it's uh, Not a big deal compile error goes away Copy and paste Copy and paste and let's set up the sequence here Oops. Add an additional pin because we're doing three different light types. Move this out of the way. Connect this here. Move this up and make sure that this is toggled off. We compile, save. My OCD takes over when I'm in blueprints and I just start adjusting stuff until it's perfect. Uh, and it never is, so I'm always... All right, anyway, so um, copy paste and let's do our point light. It's like point light from the list. Connect that up. We know these are gonna error out, so let's just go ahead and just delete those ahead of time. And we're gonna go each loop. Connect that up. Oops. And take that. Copy paste. And make sure that's disabled there so that it shuts off in the correct sequence of events all right uh, and so that's gonna be pretty much it so as you can see with ray tracing turned on um, you know performance is pretty low anytime I kind of move the camera around uh, you can really feel that the frames are you know dropping pretty low turn it off frame rates a lot higher um, and that's how you do it. That's how you get around the the, uh, the whole problem with uh, having a RTX capable but not really suit well suited for graphics card. I suspect this may also be a thing once the uh, AMD cards that support ray tracing come out. Um, if you want to do like a lot of ray tracing happening at once, uh, since I don't believe they have dedicated uh, hardware, but we'll see. Since uh, there's no public information on that yet, but. Uh, if you uh, like this kind of content, uh, feel uh, free to uh, like and subscribe. It helps the channel out a lot. As uh, um, you know, any kind of interaction on the channel is good for the channel. Um, if you want to see this, you know, more of this type of content again, just you know, let me know, and uh, I'll you know, I'll see what I can come up with that's useful and handy. Um, uh, thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time.